Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, we're going to be looking at a very important entrance examination called the COMED KUGET. Now this stands for the Consortium of Medical Engineering and Dental Colleges of Karnataka and UJET stands for Undergraduate Entrance Test. So this exam consists of questions asked from physics, chemistry and math. Today we're going to be looking at some questions from physics. So let's start off with the first question. A square loop carrying a steady current I is placed in a horizontal plane near a long straight conductor carrying a steady current I1 at a distance D from the conductor as shown in the figure. The loop will experience a net repulsive force away from the conductor, net torque acting upward perpendicular to the horizontal plane, net torque acting downward normal to the horizontal plane, net attractive force towards the conductor. So uh, let's look at our question. So we need to find out the force on a loop due to the current carrying conductor. So that's our question and we need to find out its direction uh, because since we are having a loop containing a current, there's going to be multiple forces. We need to find out which of these is the net result. So when it comes to force on a loop due to current carrying conductor, the force is represented as I times L times B times sine theta. So I stands for the current, L stands for the length, B stands for the magnetic field, S sine theta is the, um, what do we call it? Sine theta is the trigonometric function here. Now, magnetic field for this particular scenario is usually represented as mu naught by 2 pi times I over D. When we apply this to the force formula, we get I square L mu naught sine theta over 2 pi D. Now, this isn't done usually, but the reason I'm doing it is to um, identify the relation between force and distance. So you'll have a force here, a force here, a force there, and a force there. These two forces cancel each other out because they're at the same. However, the force towards and away from the conductor have um, differences, have different magnitudes because of the distance between the two. So. As you can see from this formula, it's clear that force is inversely proportional to the distance from the current carrying conductor. So therefore, if we take this as F1 and take this as F2, F1 is closer to the current carrying conductor, so that force is going to be higher than F2, which is farther away. So therefore, F1 is greater than F2 because d1 is less than d2. So if f1 is greater than f2, then that means f1 is the attractive force because it's pushing the loop towards the conductor. So therefore option d, net, net attractive force towards the conductor, is the right answer. Option a is incorrect because that is the opposite of what we've just found out. Um, when, when we calculate torque using the right hand uh, thumb rule, um, it's clear that the torque uh, goes through, uh, it goes parallel, it doesn't go perpendicular in either direction, so therefore B and C are incorrect. The correct answer is option D, and net attractive force towards the conductor. So F1 is greater than F2. Let's look at another question. An alternating voltage of 220 volts, 50 hertz frequency is applied across a capacitor of capacitance to microfarads. Find the impedance of the circuit. Now, how do we calculate impedance? Impedance 
which is represented as xc, is equal to 1 over omega times the capacitance. Now, omega, which is the angular frequency, can be re represented as 2 pi times the linear frequency. Now, over here, since all of the answers are in pi, we don't need to find the value of pi itself. We do know the value of frequency and the capacitance. So, therefore, we can apply those to pi. Frequency is 50. Capacitance is 2 microfarad. So, that is 2 times 10 raised to minus 6. 10 raised to minus 6 is occurring in the denominator, so that goes upwards. 2 times 50 times 2 is 200. So, 10 raised to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Over 200 pi. Now you can cancel those two zeros. Ten di two divides ten five times. So therefore, the right answer of the impedance is five thousand over pi. So five thousand over pi is the correct answer, and that is option D again. Uh, the op option A says pi over 5,000, which is the inverse, 1,000 over pi and 500 pi. Again, wrong values because they're not, they're not concurrent to the value that we got, which is 5,000 over pi. So option D is the correct option. Now that concludes this episode of Comet KU Jet. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you like this video, then please don't forget to hit the like button and also share it with your contacts. And if you want to get the latest updates about Comet KUJet or any of our other um, content, then please don't forget to press the notifications icon again present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.